My name is Lashawn. I'm 44 years old. I've been incarcerated for five years in Bedford Hills for four. I am housed here on the outer floor, 114. Um, and I'm excited to be here today. Yeah. Um, we've been conversing, you and I, for a little bit. Yes. So it's wonderful what you have shared with us and so deep. Um, but I would love to ask you, it seems like in all your writing to us, you've talked so much about your mom mm -hmm. and what an impact she had on you. Um, and you attribute so much to her. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about your relationship with your mom? So my mother was my best friend. She and I were inseparable prior to her death. Um, I have two children and both of my children, a son and daughter, are named after my parents. So it was like together, I was fortunate to be raised with both parents in the same household. Um, it was very different amongst my peers growing up because they didn't have that. I kind of you know, took, took it for granted until I got older, um, honestly, until I had time to reflect and come here and get back to, you know, attached to my real self. Um, I'm in here. I've been given a 25-year-to-life sentence um, for the death of my mother, for the murder of my mother. My parents were murdered in August of 2005, and 12 years later, I was arrested for her death. Um, so it's really, you know, tra traumatic for me, considering, you know, the reasons for my conviction, or why, or even after that 12-year period of time, there was like no DNA, no eyewitness, there was nothing. Um, but theories that weren't even proven by, you know, that had no factual findings to them whatsoever. So I'm learning a lot. I'm humble myself and, you know, right now it's just, I have no control over circumstance and I'm literally fighting for my life and fighting my life for my life. So I'm, I've gotten back to myself, my true self. I find, I'm finding positive things within this situation you know, staying um, focused in college. I have a, you know, a really pretty decent job in here that keeps me motivated. And I have support of my family, so people that believe in me and, and know that the circumstances were, were just hideous, horrendous. More importantly, I found out that well, prior to me being incarcerated, hearing of someone being wrongfully accused and convicted was, it's, I'm not gonna say it was, yeah, right, you know, it doesn't happen, but actually living it, it's real. And I found more since I've been here that I'm not alone, that there's many others. And even recently, within the past few couple of years, few years of me being here, I've seen a lot of innocent men and women finally get their, their you know, their voice be heard. Um, and they have been released and exonerated. I know it's taken a long time for them, and hopefully it doesn't take that long for me, but, you know, patience is something you grow in here. Mm -hmm. um, and her strength, my mother, she, I was raised, she taught me so much. The strength that I have is due to her. She kept me focused, she, she was an amazing role model, provider, friend, confidant, all of the above. And I have to stay strong for her. Oh my gosh, that's absolutely incredible life to live through. What keeps you going each day? So, as I mentioned, I have children, and I'm a believer that, let me just say this, so when, in growing up, if my mother wasn't okay, I wasn't okay. So even being away from my children, I know if I don't stay strong, and you know, remain positive for them and focus for them, that they'll fall apart as well. And that's not an option. Um, I know the truth. It, it, so I can't, I'm, no one's gonna fight for me like I'm fighting for myself. No matter if, you know, what appellate lawyer or who, or pro bono attorney or anyone from the outside is gonna help me, I still have to be focused enough to give my input because I'm the only one that's been there each step of the way. 
So if I lose it at any point, I'm, I'm never gonna give up. I'm never gonna get out of here. I cannot give up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have a wonderful star spirit that keeps fighting for that. So tell me about your children. So my daughter, she is um, 24, soon to be 25 in a couple of weeks. My son is 17 and when I left and I was incarcerated, my son was 12. And actually, on June 17th of this year, it was my first time seeing him. In all those years, he was, a family member brought him up. And it was just amazing. He's grown so much. And I'm missing a lot. But I do, you know, communicate with them, emails, telephone conversations almost every day. And just hearing their voices, hearing the fact, being able to um, be a parent from afar because although I'm here, I'm still a mom. So any and everything that I'm able to do, you know, where, whether it's you know small monetary things that I'm able to send and gifts or my advice and listening ear is still required of me. I can't just being here doesn't negate or excuse me from my responsibilities. So they play a big part of my life. I have three grandchildren, grandsons. Um, for my daughter, of course, and her oldest is five. She has a set of twins who are three and a half and haven't yet to meet them. Mm -hmm. But when we talk, they talk to me as if they know me, I guess because we talk so much and, I don't know, pictures and it's just the most interaction I can have. I'm gonna always do any and everything I can for them. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful that you keep in contact with them so much that you have emails and that connection and yes. they're open to all that um is there something i, I want to talk a little bit about your poetry but i want to be conscientious of time um is there something that you would like to share that you haven't so far um well the things that i've shared are what means the most to me it's more it's not that i'm a writer of poetry i love quotes um quotes help me on a day-to-day -day basis. My famous or well, my most positive quote that I chant or say every day is that um, I'm stronger because I had to be. I'm smarter because of the mistakes I've made. I'm happier because of the sadness I've known and not wiser because I've learned. That hits home for me because Obviously, I've experienced tremendous sadness upon, you know, being the one to actually find my best friend, my mom, murdered in a horrific condition, horrific state. Um, and now to be, you know, here due to just simply finding her. I'm happy because I'm strong enough to make it, to maintain it, to keep my sanity under the situations. I'm smarter because I'm still going strong. I'm still staying positive, focused, doing any and everything I can do to find myself again, to find the real me again. And I'm always gonna be wiser due to this situation and circumstance. No one can ever take this from me. I mean. Sometimes I say, well, maybe I did need to come to prison. No, not for what I'm here for, obviously, and not for the amount of time that I've been given, but after finding my mom, I lost myself, you know. There isn't a script to finding anyone, let alone your mother, murdered. So I lost myself. I was into a certain lifestyle that I wasn't proud of. And had I not come to prison, who knows, I'm, I may be dead or sh strung out on drugs and or just, you know, living a creepish type of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Unhealthy, ungodly. So I needed to come here to find myself, to get back to the real me. It wasn't that I needed to accept. I, you know, I, I got you could say I accept the fact that I'm here because it's out of my control but I can just continue to do any and everything possible to gain my freedom back. Um, I'm the greatest advocate for myself. I know what I write, you know. Um, like no other, I 
found my, you know, I got back, I found religion, I found a peace, sense of peace and really getting to know God and my Protestant Christian. So had I not come here, I may not never have grown or gained the experience or relationship I found with God being here. And it's healthy, it's, it's motivating, it's uplifting. Um, so there's a lot of reasons. I, mainly I need to get to the real me. Yes, I've been away from my children, but our relationship is stronger than ever. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm able to focus more being, you know, to me, finding me again, I'm able to focus more and give them positive advice. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Your strength is permeating. Absolutely permeating, and how well you know yourself, and you're able to look at your journey and with such clear eyes, and and make so much good out of such a repressive environment and such a burden to carry. So I personally want to thank you and bring me to tears hearing about what you've gone through. So, um, no tears required. I'm all cried out. You yeah. know, yeah. there's no room for tears anymore. And, you know, I just thank you guys for coming. This is this is important to me that you guys came through, that yes, I've sent you information about myself, my history, what I'm going through, but to actually be here sitting in front of you physically, it's a release. It's a way also for me to get for my voice to be heard. And I believe, you know, once someone really takes the time to hear and see the facts and the lack of, you know, it's gonna make a big difference. It is, it sounds like you have a big welcoming committee at home too. <laughs> Absolutely. To support you. <laughs> Absolutely. Which is a big gift. Um, so in the uh, mindfulness of time, do you have questions that you want to ask of us? Um, I tried to think of some, but I believe just everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I feel like some good may come from this. I, and if I didn't come, I would have been beating myself in the head. But yeah. Yeah. And it's a voice for your own family, too, right? They'll be able to be able to follow our social media channels and YouTube yes. websites. <laughs> so they'll be able to see you. Yes, yeah. yeah, but they believe in me. I just need for someone who has the the reach, the connection, the conviction mm -hmm. to take the time and reach out and not be more than happy, more than cooperative, actually, you know, probably overwhelming and the assistance and the help and the information and what I'd be able to provide to whoever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful, wonderfully heavy, and it's wonderful to see you how you are today and to be here and everything that's happened. I didn't know, realize your mom had passed since the very first day that we were talking. So um, if you don't mind, I would love to give uh, still pictures of you. And then, I can't be that close to you, but I'd love to be in one together. Are you comfortable unhitching them? Yeah. Okay. Just tell me when. Yeah, now. Okay. <laughs>